You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Well, hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us again, once again, here at Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff, here on Let's Talk Pets on Pet Life Radio, where I am here for you. I am here to answer your questions about your pets. You can reach us one of two ways. Either send me a quick email to drjeff at petliferadio.com, or easier, call us at 877-385-8882. And we're here to answer your questions about your pets. Dogs and cats are my my favorites. However, if you have a question about anything, ask it. We'll go ahead. I will get you an answer, and we'll talk about it next week on our show. We're here every Thursday, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. And um, I want to thank our sponsors, ProSense Pet Products and Walmart. And ProSense is a line of pet products geared to the consumer by the vet, but for the consumer. So the only place you're going to get products of this quality would be from your veterinarian. But we wanted to bring you things that you can use and you can find conveniently at your local retailers. So before we get to the phones and questions, I get emails to the show. Once again, you can drop me an email at drjeff at petliferadio.com. And there are one subject seems to come up a lot, and that is concerns about diarrhea and blood in the stool. Now, mind you, I know that anyone whose pet has blood in the stool is cause for concern and alarm, and a lot of people get very alarmed at seeing blood in the stool. Well, as it turns out, that blood in the stool is indicative of a large intestinal irritation slash bleed, because when stool is black or more like purple, that lets us know that the bleeding is coming up from either the stomach or the small intestine, which, believe it or not, is even more serious. And blood in the stool, when it's red blood, we call frank blood, which is coming from the large intestine. Another name for that is colitis, an inflamed large bowel. And that typically, though looks pretty scary because you're seeing blood in the stool often mixed with mucus, is really not that serious as compared to bleeding from higher up in the GI tract, in the gastrointestinal tract. And one way to tell the difference as far as how serious this is, is look at your pet. Usually it's in the dog, and typically the dog is still going to be happy, alert, playful, active, eating, can't wait for next meal. And as opposed to dogs that are very depressed, very lethargic, not wanting to eat, and we'll typically see that with small intestinal diarrhea or with diarrhea coming from the stomach. So what usually stimulates or causes colitis are things like it's a number of things, and, and when I, especially when I see this in puppies, I'll say, you know, you're going to listen to the next five or six things that might cause this and take your pick because when it comes to pups, oh, my God, or certain breeds of dogs, but here they are, nerves, stress, anxiety, diet, diet change, parasites, etc. Well, any number of those things could be happening in most of our pets. I mean, I, two of my dogs are Labradors, and I like to call them garbage can. That is their joy in life is to get into garbage, is to get into something that's uh, someone else's throwaway, pick things up, my puppy lab, oh my God, if it's not bolted down or it doesn't eat him first, it's in his mouth. And does he present with colitis, large bowel, diarrhea, sometimes with mucus, sometimes with blood? He certainly does, but is he still running around like a mad dog? Is he still ready to jump in the pool? Is he still ready to eat his next meal? He is, and therefore, I am less worried. So if you have some dog with colitis, and you know that parasites are unlikely. If you want, you can bring a, a stool sample in to your veterinarian for evaluation to at least rule out parasites. But if everything else is fine, he still wants to eat, he still wants to play, try a few of the following things before you rush to your veterinarian. Add some fiber to the diet. Fiber can be many shapes and forms. We have two kinds of fibers that we recommend. One is called soluble fiber, and those are the edible fibers. Bran, bran flakes, cooked oatmeal, canned pumpkin, things like that brown rice. And then there's also the insoluble fibers. Those are the non-digestible fibers. And those are like psyllium. And that's the active ingredient of most of your stool regulator powders like Metamucil and Fibrol and Correctol, the the quote-unquote powder laxatives. And sometimes if the case is really bad, I like a combination of both. 
But I would say if you add some fiber to the diet for, you know, like say a medium to large size dog, oh, a couple of tablespoons of cooked oatmeal or bran or, you know, baker's bran, don't use raisin bran because raisins are toxic to many dogs. Or some canned pumpkin. They love canned pumpkin. It's sweet and it's got a lot of fiber. And on top of that, I'd add, mix in a little bit of your insoluble fibers like your psyllium or any of the products that, that contain psyllium. And that should take care of the problem. If it doesn't and or if your dog is not happy, alert, playful, active in eating, then it's time to see your veterinarian. Absolutely. So – And one other, um, something I see often, I see it in small breeds, but it can really happen with any dog. And you'll get a call, I get a call on an emergency that my dog appears to be drunk. His head is tilted, he seems like he's falling over to one side, and he can't keep his balance. And again, if someone were to see that, they come home and see their dog doing that, you know, if it's at night time, they're going to get into the car and rush to the emergency clinic. Well, slow down, because often... This is something that we see. It has a very acute onset, even if the ears are crystal clean and fine, and we call it idiopathic vestibular disease. It's a disease of the middle ear. It's a balance and equilibrium problem. Nobody really knows why it comes on. That's why we joke and call it idiopathic because we're a bunch of idiots. We can't figure out why it happens. And it is basically, it's almost like a person with vertigo, a person whose world starts to spin and they just can't seem to right themselves. They want to hang on to things. And that's why these dogs often will present with the head tilted to one side. And here's another telltale sign that you're dealing with what we call IVD, idiopathic vestibular disease. And that is hold your dog's head, hold him kind of by the cheeks around his ears and hold him up and look him straight into the eyes. I want you looking into his eyes or her eyes. And watch what's happening in your dog's eyes. Chances are, if this is IVD, the idiopathic vestibular disease, those eyes will be flickering back and forth, usually a fast component and then a slow component. So it shoot fast to the left and come back to the right slowly. Shoot fast to the left and come back to the right slowly. And that just helps us determine what side the lesion is on, whether, you know, the fast or the slow component. But we call that nystagmus. So if you have a dog with nystagmus, You have a dog who is falling to one side or kind of wants to circle to one side and everything else is fine and everything was fine an hour or two ago. You're probably dealing with idiopathic vestibular disease. It looks worse than it is. Certainly, you might want to, if you are one to panic, you might want to go see your veterinarian, have them check the ears, make sure there's no ear infection. But other than that, there's not a, a lot of things that can be done other than tincture of time. Sometimes some veterinarians might use a little cortisone. Some might use a little bit of bonine or meclizine, which is an anti-vertigo travel sickness medication. Uh, if the ears are infected, clean the ears out. But those are some of the things that, uh, that we do. So anyway, I see that we have a caller. So why don't we, uh, now that we have our open phone lines, let's uh, take a look and listen and see who's trying to get a hold of us. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Who's this? Yeah, this is uh, Gates. My dog suffers from uh, fleas all the time. We've given him everything possible. For some reason, he does not help. Every time I come back a few days later, I find quite a few fleas falling over. It's a little chihuahua that I have. And you said that you're suffering from fleas? Yes, a lot of fleas. All right. So first of all, I have to say, you know, you said you're here in California. I know in California because I'm here in California, the flea season has readily begun and they are quite the nuisance. And for those of you in other parts of the country that are still a little too cold for fleas, just you wait because it seems like every season seems to be a little worse than the season before. So first and foremost, there are a number of aspects to treatment. Number one, a quick kill. Quick kill can either come from a good flea bath, a medicated flea bath, or there, is a, uh, there are some products out there that are, uh, one is an oral product called Capstar, and this will literally, it's amazing, within 30 minutes will kill every single flea on your dog. However, there's no staying power to Capstar. It's merely for quick kill. It's for that case where in lieu of a bath, where you're going to kill every flea on the dog during the bath, it's going to kill them with the pill, but we still need to work on the pet. Now, we've learned a few things about flea behavior in the past, and one of the things that we used to promote years and years ago, we used to say the following, that fleas are environmental more than an obligate parasite on the pet. For example, we used to say that for every one flea you found on the pet, there were 10 or 50 in the environment. We have since learned that that's not the case. The only fleas that are in the environment are going to be freshly hatched 
baby fleas. Once a flea jumps on the pet, they become an obligate parasite, meaning they need that blood meal. Something actually changes in the flea's digestive tract, intestinal tract, that once they have that first meal, now they need that meal. And if they don't get it, they're going to die within several hours. So if you have a flea that, I mean, jumped on the pet, took its first meal, and then jumped off the pet and couldn't find the pet again, most likely that flea would soon die on its own. Now, so the mechanics have changed. We are less concerned about treating the environment than we once were because we know that once a flea jumps on that dog, it's either going to get killed by that which we are using to treat the dog or it's going to get killed if it falls off the dog and doesn't find the dog again, it will die on its own. So our first and foremost, we need to find good products that will kill the fleas on the pet. There are a number of products available from your veterinarian and even some that are available over the counter that are good products. Do you want to check with your veterinarian? I mean, ranging from the Bayer Products Advantage or Canine Advantix to the Marial Products, the Frontline, to the, the Siva Products Vectra and Vectra 3D, to the Elanco Lily Products of Trifexis and Comfortis. There are a lot of good products out there that some of them have other actions in addition to fleas. Some do heartworm, some do intestinal parasites, some do ticks. So you really need to look at your evaluate lifestyle of the dog and decide which is the best for your pet and certainly talk with your veterinarian. Some are topical that are applied or topically to the skin like the little called spot-ons and still others are oral products which are very effective as well. Now what about the environment? We used to think less of needing to really work on the environment. What I would recommend, uh, there are some good products out there. There's still some bombs, some top premise sprays. There's a great premise powder which is called flea busters, which will kill the young adult fleas as well before they've even had a chance to hatch or to jump on the dog. And some of the premise sprays, you want to look for something that has in it what's called an insect growth regulator. That's IGR. And those will actually prevent the pupil stage and the larval stage from developing into young adult fleas. So that it would be very effective if you are having a situation where the fleas are just literally all over the place. Now, one thing to know, I'm not a big fan of the foggers. Why? Because one another thing we've learned about fleas is, is that they are photophobic. They don't like to be in direct sunlight. So when you have, a, for example, light shining through a big living room window onto a floor, that light alone, the flea larvae are going to try to migrate for cover. So they're going to travel to under the coffee table, under the couch, under the lounge chair, etc., under the TV stand. So when you set a fogger where the mist goes up in the air and then settles down from the ceiling down, it's going to land on top of that coffee table, on top of that couch, on top of that TV stand, but not under where it needs to go. So I've become more a fan of a premise spray where you can actually direct the spray to go exactly where you want it to go and where it needs to go. So premise-wise, I would look into a good premise spray or I'd look into the Flea Busters powder. So uh, does that help you? Yes, I'm sure I'm going to give it a try. And, uh, so you got some homework. So get your dog a little chihuahua on the flea medication. See your veterinarian. And um, if you really have a lot of fleas, and it sounds like you do if she's having a lot of problems, and you're seeing fleas soon after the bath, I think it's time to do something for your house as well. All right? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, and thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so uh, why don't we uh, take a break here? And uh, make sure you come back. And that number, once again, 877-385-8882. Give us a call. We're looking forward to hearing from you. I'm Dr. Jeff Werber with PetLifeRadio.com. And we are Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Dog Shelter Blues, the new novel by Mark Conkling. This hard-hitting story lights up the world of animal rescue with engaging characters and their pets, struggling with their own internal demons as they attempt to rescue innocent creatures that sometimes bring a mysterious transforming power to broken lives. Read the first chapter of Dog Shelter Blues free at dogshelterblues.com Then come along a breathtaking journey that ends with an astonishing triumph of good over evil. Order your copy of Dog Shelter Blues today. Available at Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. 
Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> So welcome back to Let's Talk Pets at Pet Life Radio, and I'm Dr. Jeff with Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. And get a hold of us at 877-385-8882, or drop me an email. We'd love to hear from you. Even if you're shy and you're afraid to call in, just drop me an email. We will answer your question. We'll read your question and answer it online, and of course, give you and your pet credit for asking the question, and that's Dr. Jeff, D-R-J-E-F-F, at Pet Life Radio. Dot com. So we have another caller on the line. Caller, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Hi, who is this? Hi, um, this is Laura. I talked to you a couple of weeks ago about our bulldogs. Okay, how you doing, Laura? I'm doing good. So uh, uh, was this with, with the eye cleaning thing? What was the question about? That's right. Yep, that's right. It was about, yep. So and what's going, going on? Really, really well. I'm going to have a, kind of a weird question for you. I love weird questions. Um, <laughs> uh, we get duck eggs, fresh duck eggs from our neighbor, and they're, really, they're pretty large. And so what we do is, like, at night, we'll cook it up and we'll distribute it. We have three large dogs, so we, you know, split it up between the three of them every night. And I didn't know, you know, giving them one every night, if that was okay to do or if they yeah, I mean, be. Yeah, I mean, eggs are, are okay. I, personally, I've never had a duck egg. I can, uh, I'm sure an, an egg is an egg. Yeah. You know, the, the thing is, as long as the basic amount on a long-term basis of the yolk with the egg white – there's some important things. You know, a lot of times people like their egg white omelets, and which is good. But mm-hmm. you also want to get a little yolk in there too, because there's a balance between of, of having both of them together. So if you have cooked eggs, I'm not a big fan of raw eggs, but cooked right. eggs, and you have, you know, they're getting their avidin, they're getting their yolk and the albumin all together. That is fine as long as it's again not in uh, in excess. And it sounds like if you're doing for a big dog one egg a day, that's not a problem. And um, you know, one of the good things about dogs is that dogs will obviously have cholesterol. Some of them actually have cholesterol issues where we'll do what? a blood test and they're eating bad food or too much fatty foods and they have getting high cholesterol. I think a high normal for dog is like 300 and something, 324. That's some dog get these dogs with really high cholesterol. But the issue is that in order for a dog to end up with the artery problems, the atherosclerosis that people get from having too high a cholesterol, they'd have to live to about 30 or 35. And obviously, though we'd love that to happen, right. I would say that would be one of the best problems that we'd ever have, is right. to worry about our dog's cholesterol problems and the damage it's causing, because that means they're living till 30. But clearly, yeah. they're not. So um, I think uh, you're safe. But it wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, as your dogs get older and you're going to want to see your veterinarian for the annual exam and they take that blood test, whether they call it a Super Chem uh, 17 or just a full Super Chem, it's going to test for cholesterol as well. That'll be a great you know, marker for you to see whether or not cholesterol is too high. My hunch is it might even, even if it's a little high, it's just a little high and I wouldn't worry too much about it. Right. 
Right. They really By like the way, them, though. I was just going to ask you, have you ever had a duck egg? Yeah. I mean, we were eating them, too. Um, really? I don't, I don't really like them that much. They're a little bit more rubbery. You know, they're really, really big. They're hard. they got a very hard shell. Uh-huh. Um, so I said... And I don't feel like eating these, but so we said, well, let's cook them up and put them in the dog because we had it's a like, lot of them. Let's dog show. They'll eat anything. It's like the old commercial they, with life with yeah. Mikey. Let's get Mikey. He he won't eat it. Yeah, you know, right. you know they eat a lot of stuff outside. So, <laughs> so um, they really seem to like it. It makes in with their food. All right, well, there you go. I, I learn something every day as well, and uh, that's a good one. Duck eggs, dogs. I've never tried it, but it's fine. So when the big ones get old enough, you know, usually it's seven for a big dog, unless there's a problem, of course, and, and usually seven or even eight for a small dog before you're going to go in for that routine, even if my dog is perfectly healthy, blood test. You know, before then, uh, unless it's pre-anesthesia, unless it's something wrong with the dog, you know, if you have a perfectly healthy, nothing wrong ever kind of dog and you just are going in for, you know, a routine annual exam, that's about the time we want to start doing blood tests. I'd be curious to know what that uh, cholesterol level is like. But short of that, I think we're good. All right. Well, Laura, thanks for the call. And if you uh, now you're not a hold of us, and obviously Laura's not shy, everybody, because this is the second time we've spoken to her, and she got us at eight seven seven three eight five eight 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 two, and we do want to hear from you as well. And um, once again, I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, thank our sponsors, ProSense Pet Products, a veterinary quality products available to you, the consumer, at your local retailer. Now, you know, one of the things I was talking, I see a lot of puppies in my practice. And you know, one of the things we talk about are some behaviors. It would be great to you know, have Arden Moore chat about this as well at times. And I'm sure she does, but it'll be great to get different perspectives. But what I find is that going over this with clients all the time, and that is that the most overused word in puppydom is no. We are so fast to use the word no. And what are the probably the cardinal mistakes that puppies make? Well, certainly bathroom mistakes. And the second one probably would be chewing mistakes. And what's interesting is when you look at chewing as a behavior and when you look at relieving a dog oneself as a behavior, they are both normal, natural, essential behaviors. So when you're dealing with a normal, natural, essential behavior, how could we possibly use the word no? Because no really doesn't apply. And that's, I think, why we have so many of these dogs with problems and we're, we're messing them up because we're just giving them mixed messages. Wait a second. You know, um, you go outside and you want me to go, but in the house you don't want I, I don't get it. So here's a perfect scenario. And I get this, this all the time. Doc, I took him out for an hour. One hour. And he would not go. And I brought him back in the house. I put him in his crate. And in two seconds, as soon as I left the room, he went to his crate. And I said, well, what do you expect? I said, has he ever made a mistake or had an accident, I like to use that word better, in the house, out of his crate? Well, of course. So what did you do? Well, I took him over to it, and I said, no. Well, guys, that's 30 years old. We don't do that anymore. So what happened was he then takes the dog outside and trying to encourage his new puppy to go to the bathroom, and he's saying, come on, Bowser, go. It's okay. It's okay. And poor old Bowser's looking up and said, what are you, nuts? Go in front of you. you. You hit me last time I did it. You yelled at me last time I went. So anyway, this is why it is so important to look and understand the behavior and say to yourself, wait a second, is this really just a normal behavior that is misdirected or is this truly an abnormal behavior? When that dog chews your brand new shoes, chewing for a puppy is normal, natural, essential. It's good for their oral development. It's good for their mental development. They are going to chew. They have to chew. So when they get a hold of something that wasn't meant to be chewed on, whose fault really was it? It was your fault because you left it out. You didn't puppy-proof the room. You didn't turn around before you closed that door and that puppy inside the room said, okay, what could he possibly get a hold of? And if it's even remotely possible, lift it up, move it out of the way. And just know one thing, and this is so funny, and it's true. Given a choice, if your dog has an option of an old, lousy pair of bedroom slippers or your brand new, very expensive shoes, guess which one he's going after? So my recommendation is understand it's all about positive reward, positive reinforcement. Don't try to uh, prevent the mistakes or the accidents before they happen. And when an accident happens, just tough. All right? 
just tough. Now, if you see a dog, for example, chewing on that which is inappropriate, don't say no. Give a loud whistle. Clap your hands really loudly. You will get his attention. You then calmly remove that inappropriate object. You give him his appropriate chew toy and tons and tons of praise and excitement. And that's how you're going to get these dogs to learn to do the right thing. Likewise, if you walk in that room and there's an accident on the carpet, tough. Nothing you can do about it. Just keep taking him outside. Give him lots of positive reinforcement for going outside. And ultimately, he will learn. He'll get it. So um, uh, anytime you have any questions, please, we love working with the puppy problems because they're really not problems. They're normal, essential behaviors that we need to just direct them into the right place. And uh, I think you will have a lot of success with your puppies. And boy, they are a lot of fun to have success with. So once again, it seems like our uh, our time is coming to a, a near end. I want to reinforce that we want to hear from you. I want to hear from you at 877-385-8882. It's important to um, give us a call. Anything you want to talk about, anything to do with medical stuff, a surgery your pet is about to have, skin and ear problems, which are very prevalent coming into spring and summer, exercise topics during the spring and summer, what to do, what's the safe thing to do, when to do, end-of-life issues. I deal a lot with end-of-life issues. Pet rescue, tons of stuff on pet rescue. So there's got to be stuff. I know you're listening, you're tuning in to Let's Talk Pets, Pet Life Radio, and you know and I know that there are things you would like to talk about, and I'm here for you. We are actually the only call-in show where you get to have a voice. You don't have to sit there and listen. I hate talking all day. I want to I want to talk to you about some issues your pet is having. And we're live. We're live on the air on Thursdays, 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And um, we, want to, uh, we want to hear from you. Or, once again, when you're shy, if you're shy, drjeff at petliferadio.com. Once again, Dr. Jeff at petliferadio.com. So, again, just want to uh, thanks for joining me. Thank you for our callers, Gabe and Laura. We want to hear from more of you. And um, I want to thank our sponsors again. ProSense Pet Products. ProSense Pet Products available at your local retailer. Go on to line at walmart.com. You'll probably get some coupons for some great product savings with uh, ProSense Pet Products. ProSense developed with you, the consumer, in mind, developed by veterinarian and with experts. It's stuff that this kind of quality you will find only at your veterinarian or at your local retailer. So it's something that uh, it's a great way to save yourself some money and to get products that are wonderful for your pet, make your pets feel great, smell great, healthy, uh, you name it, we have it, ProSense. We'll see you next week, Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Until then, I'm Dr. Jeff Werber saying goodbye. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.